Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I am Andy RC and today I'm going to be looking at an awesome new product from Laser BGC for FPV and DVR on a smartphone. It was around five months ago I realized that the USB RX module by Laser BGC worked with smartphones. At the time I didn't realize how popular it was going to be and I want to thank everyone who watched those videos. To recap the videos, I first did it with the Laser BGC USB module. I then made a video doing it with the EasyCap device. After that, I used the Wi Fi Avin 2.4 module with the iPhone and then the Android. And now I'm happy to demonstrate an Android specific USB on the go RX module from Laser BGC. It can be used with any Android phone that supports USB on the go via a USB micro B connector. It also can be used with any of the Fatshark Dominator removable modules. There are two options you have when you buy. You can have what they are calling an N-Type connector or a U-connector. They are the same though, the name only describes the orientation the connector is in. My phone is the Nexus 5 which is the same device used in all the other videos. Its orientation is in the U position, however Laser BGC kindly sent me this module to try, but with an N connector. I have since realised though that this is better. Ordering the U-type connection will put my antenna in front of the module and also the phone. Ordering the N-type connector reverses it so your antenna can face outwards. It's not as pretty, but it will give you a better signal, especially when using 5.8 GHz, which cannot penetrate objects very well. If we compare the Android module to the Notebook module, you can see that it is smaller. This has been made light as possible so that it's not too heavy and fall out of the phone. This does come at a sacrifice though, as we no longer have the channel selector button. Instead, we have four dip switches which allows us to use the same eight channels as before. There isn't any info on which dip switch combination relates to which frequency, however if you follow this diagram with the first three dip switches relating to the channel number and the fourth dip switch in the up position, then you can get the same eight channels you do on their first USB module. To find the correct channel, I turned on my VTX and went through all of the channels in the diagram until I got a picture. I tend not to swap channels so this won't be a huge issue for me. Let's get on to the apps that you can use with it. There are three which I have tested out and recommend. Unfortunately, only one of them is free and it's not the best one. So let's start with that. The app is called Camera FI. Five months ago when I did my first video, I dismissed it because of the large icons on the screen. The icons are still there and now unfortunately they have watermarked the video too. To remove the watermark, you have to enter some sort of competition which I'm not a fan of at all and hopefully they will remove this. The two apps that I'm going to be using in this video are paid ones. They both have demo versions if you want to check them out. They only cost around 5 GBP each which I think is reasonable. The first one is called USB Web Camera. It works fine but I still don't like the icons that are left on the screen but they are still minimal. There are no options to remove them. The icons are not on the recorded footage though. One thing I like about this one is there is an option to fit picture to window, so if you have a 16x9 FPV camera like my FPV plate, it will look really nice and fill the screen. It seems that since my first video though, they have made an amendment to the video format. The container shows as MP42, which my computer won't play. The phone does play them though, interestingly. I converted the file into a different format, although I'm sure there's a codec out there for it. The next app is now my favourite and it is called USB Camera. It did exist when I did my original video, but the image stuttered and there was a lot of lag. They seem to have fixed this now though. It is my favourite because you can press record and then press full screen. There are no icons on the page but it continues to record in the background. The files are in a nice MP4 format and have a slightly better bitrate than the other app, although it's only running at 3 megabit but that's plenty for DVR in my opinion. You can select an uncompressed format but I wouldn't recommend it. Its only downside is that it doesn't have a fit to window option so we are stuck in the 4x3 format. This isn't a huge deal as all but one of my FPV cams are 4x3, however it's the one feature that it's missing. I have not noticed any extra drain on the battery but I'm sure there will be. The device gets warm to the touch when plugged into the phone and that will require extra power. 
I have got this little handy device from Banggood. It's called the Blitzwolf Dual USB Power Supply. It allows me to charge two USB devices at the same time rather than having multiple plugs for single USB devices. This has allowed me to charge my camera and my phone while creating this video. With the phone battery charged fully, I was able to get a few flights in without any significant drain on the phone's battery. One thing that is great about this setup in general is that it's convenient and compact. I have bought this smartphone adapter mount for my transmitter which connects to its handle. This is how I'm going to be flying today. I'm also using my trusty Alien WeeBase micro quad with the FPV plate I made on the channel, so let's go flying. It seems that a lot of people in the comments believe that there is too much lag using these smartphone methods, so I'm going to put this straight. I can't notice any difference between the fat shot dominators and using the phone. You will see in this video that this is a pretty fast quadcopter for its size. I'm able to fly fast and accurately, thread the needle through and under the trees, perform flips and fly incredibly low. All these things require very low latency, which this device brings. Be sure to put your phone on aeroplane mode so no one can disturb your flying. I'd like to rename that mode on my phone to quadcopter mode, but I don't think the Android developers will be on board for some reason. Let's talk about what happens when the signal is lost. The device does blue screen, but I must stress you can see here that it only does it when the picture is completely lost. It also rapidly comes back and I didn't find it a problem at all compared to other devices that do blue screen. My only worry with this module is that it is hanging off our phone's USB port. Sure, it's light and USB connectors on phones are designed to take a beating, but I'd like to see a more secure way of connecting it to the phone rather than fully relying on the USB connector itself. Unfortunately, one thing that this hobby attracts is intrigued people. I say unfortunately because here a family has decided to stop directly in the middle of the field and watch me fly. I would have liked to have fly over them, but these micro quads can still nip you and I didn't want to risk it, especially as they had a baby in a pram. Not sure why they had brought their pram along as the grass was pretty long and they were really struggling to get it to move. I didn't have any problems with the range compared to other video receivers. One thing I was concerned about was the fact that the components are now in close proximity and unwanted RF noise could cause some interference. This wasn't the case though. Interestingly, I strapped the Xiaomi Yi camera to my head to try and record the flight as well and this caused huge RF noise and gave me a very limited range. This is why I am only showing you the DVR footage taken from the camera app on the phone. I believe that this Android FPV module is ahead of the game and I predict that in the future we are going to see more things like this integrated into transmitters. I had a 7 year break from flying and I was really surprised that they had not changed that much apart from them being 2.4 GHz opposed to being 72 MHz and 35 MHz respectively. Imagine an Android based TX that has the functionality and diversity of the Tyrannis with a frequency swappable integrated FPV module that can make use of the FPV specific apps. Currently the apps I'm using here are repurposed webcam apps. Hopefully my videos have and will encourage app developers to build apps for FPV. Your support is already working. The EasyView FPV Google Card option for example. Not only that, but I would like to believe that the support that you have given to these videos was the cause for the birth of this Android device. I don't like to display a full flight in my review videos, but I want to show the reliability of this setup. I will definitely be using this with my PixHawk 450 quadcopter. It is my opinion that it is safer to use a monitor while flying a bigger quadcopter than goggles. This allows you to keep line of sight of the aircraft. I will only be using goggles with my micro quads because when they get a few feet away, flying them line of sight is not practical and neither flying them through goggles is dangerous or a risk. One thing that I picked up on is that the SMA connector on the module faces outwards as mentioned before. This means that in order to have your antenna directly vertical, your phone has to also be vertical. 
I find this a slightly unnatural position, but can probably be resolved with an adapter or a semi-rigid antenna. My personal preference would have been to have the SMA connector come out of the side of the device rather than the back, but this is a minor complaint. Also, I'm not sure that removing the channel selection buttons has reduced the weight that much, but hey, I'm not a designer, so what do I know? Something that I'm going to be using this device a lot for is for passengers. I like to fly a lot indoors, and how cool is it that you can hand your phone to someone and they can tag along for the ride? Better yet, if you are attending a model flying show or a race event, you can just plug yourself in with your phone and view the action yourself. Even check your emails and social media in between. The possibilities are endless. This module was very kindly sent to me by LaserBGC, so thanks to them for the opportunity. At the time of making this video, it has not yet been released, so keep an eye on their website and enter your email address under the product for availability. You are about to see what happens when the original version of the Alien Wii runs out of battery. Due to its onboard regulator, it will fly with no degradation until the battery can no longer sustain its power to the board and the quadcopter falls out of the sky. I'm told that this has been corrected with the next generation of the Alien Wii by using a different regulator that will show a decrease in performance. I have one of these boards, so I will test that in the future. So there you go, that's my review of the Laser BGC Android RX module. Thanks so much for watching, please continue to subscribe, cheers.